Today we will talk about Ubuntu's um, possibly going to ship their next release with a release candidate kernel. Is this a good idea, a bad idea? Let's try and make some sense of this. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. Of course, we will be looking at uh, Ubuntu and the next release is going to be 25.10 and they are hellbound to ship it with the Linux kernel 617, which has a release date of September 28th, despite their kernel freeze date of September 25th. So they're looking at shipping it with a release candidate kernel. Sounds a little crazy on the surface, but uh, let's dig into this a little bit and talk about uh, pros, cons, what's going on here, and things like that. So let's go ahead and first cover the actual articles here. So from Pharonix, Ubuntu 25.10 will ship with Linux 6.17, even if it means an unstable RC kernel. And so uh, back in May, the Ubuntu Canonical Engineers announced the plans to ship with Ubuntu 2510 with the Linux kernel 617. And given their recent commitment to always shipping with the latest upstream kernel version, they are committing to this even if it means the Ubuntu schedule will have the RC tag on the kernel. Hmm, interesting. So uh, Brett Grando, uh, Grandeboyce, on behalf of Canonical Kernel team, announced that the anti they anticipate Linux 6.17 and Ubuntu 10 being an unstable kernel at release time. Now that 6.17 cycle is underway, they have a better idea on the timing and are anticipating Linux 6.17 to be ready for its stable release on 28 September. However, the Ubuntu 25.10 kernel freeze is 25 of September. So, you know, those of us out here in logical land say, let's move the kernel freeze date. It's not necessarily that easy, though, because looking at the release announcements, uh, they just released a couple days ago the RC1 for the Linux 6.17 kernel. And if they follow the standard, uh, the standard shipment of... Um, of seven release candidates, this is actually going to mean that the release date is going to be the 28th of September. However, if there are a lot of bugs in this new kernel, they could have another one. Uh, let's see if there are only six. If there is an eighth release candidate, it could actually not drop until October 5th, only a few days before the official release of the official Ubuntu. So we don't know yet because the kernel is still in an RC1 status right now. And so what are the major changes in this? Um, usability features, long as performance uh, for the ButterFS file system, uh, newer Intel processors, and uh, ARM's branch record buffer extension, IPv6 force forwarding. Um, and so there's some other scalability for EXT4 block allocation, support for AMD hardware. So it's not like a ton of major new things. We're probably not anticipating anything in this Linux kernel that would push it out to that October date. But just know that uh, best case scenario right now, this thing releases on September 28th and Ubuntu, Ubuntu has such hard deadlines that they will not push it out to have a better product. So they're going to release a uh, release candidate. Now, uh, this, uh, let me know, we're going to manage our tracker settings. There you go. This is actually the post on the uh, on there. There's no extra comments or discussion on this one. Uh, but uh, this is based on their previous announcements that are committed. Now, this is a brand new policy. This is the first time this is happening under the brand new policy that they're going to release Ubuntu with an unstable kernel. That's what they're doing, going to do. So uh, the Linux 6.17 kernel and the upcoming 25.10 release will be more of an aggressive policy towards release kernel selection with the recent release of 6.16. We now have a much clearer idea of when 6.17 is likely to be released. As of this writing, that is tentatively 28th of September. Current 25.10 release schedule has a freeze on 25th of September, which means there is a strong possibility that 6.17 will be in a final RC state at the time the kernel needs to be frozen. 
And so, therefore, they're announcing it will potentially be an unstable release from the perspective of the colonel and will henceforth be working with that assumption until such conditions warrant a change. Now, this is the policy. Uh, let's just reset it. I should remember what my things were there. Uh, this is the policy that they had just released in October of 2024. So, uh, about one year ago, they released this policy. And this is really when they have committed for this. So the canonical kernel team is responsible for all things related to the kernel uh, for the Ubuntu release, including the version selection, preparation, qualification of the actual release, ongoing maintenance for 12 um, uh, nine months or 12 years, depending on the release type. One of the most common questions asked is, what will the kernel version be? So then there's some discussions about it. So effectively what they're saying is, yeah, the latest kernel always, no matter what, even if it's release candidate. So this is the circumstance that they looked at for the 2410. And uh, let me see if I can make this picture a little bit bigger here. So of course, these are the months. The Ubuntu freezes are over here in the arrows and the Linux kernel development is right here in the orange. And so what we see here is the Linux 10 and then we see the Linux um, 611 kernel development. The feature freeze still puts that in an RC1, but the kernel submission freeze is down here. The feature freeze, beta freeze, and then the kernel freeze put it in an RC6, RC7 with a final freeze right before it came out. Now, I don't remember if uh, I don't remember if the same thing happened last year or not. Um, I don't think it was, but maybe it was, and I just didn't catch it in the news cycle. Um, I don't remember any discussion about it at the time anyway. But basically what they say um, is the current policy has historically chosen the upstream kernel version with a conservative wait and see. So I think it's possible it went with the 6.10 probably uh, because that was the one that had been most recently released. Again, I, I completely forgot to look that up. I, I should have. But uh, uh, the current policy, of course, is that. But the new policy is to describe the what they're going to do is... In order to provide users with the absolute latest features and hardware support, it will now ship the absolute latest available version of the kernel, even if it is still in release candidate status. So there's a lot of variant things. There's a They have a tight release schedule, um, and the tight release means that the upstream kernel is in uh, versions 4 through 6. Remember, there's typically 7 release kernels, sometimes 8. So... The four, if it's through four through six, it's it's at the feature freeze. This is a tight release. The assumption is that the upstream kernel is far enough along that the team has high confidence that it will release before the beta freeze. However, the upstream kernel release will be so close to the Ubuntu release, it will necessitate a constrained period for testing. So uh, looking at the chart, if this were shifted a little bit, they talk about the beta freeze as long as it's RC4 through 6 by the feature freeze, then they would say that it's a tight release, meaning that most likely the Linux kernel will come out before the beta freeze, which is before the kernel freeze. And so we'll get a chance to see what's going on there. Now, in this release cycle that we have going on right now, as we're moving closer and closer to to the dates, what we're seeing is we are right here at the RC1, but it's shifted back a little bit, which means that it's going down under the unstable release branch here. And so an unstable release, the kernel is still an open merge window uh, versus one through uh, RC1 through 3 at the feature freeze. This is an unstable release. In this situation, the kernel team, the canonical kernel team, that's what CKT is, uh, is confident that the upstream kernel will be in an RC state in the beta freeze where the kernel version is frozen and therefore completely complete stability or even full development component cannot be expected. So we're going to release this and it's not expected to be fully supported or developed. <laughs> That's really what's going on. They have the late releases, stabilized kernel. So they basically have all these. Now they do have a bridge kernel, which if they are anticipating problems, they'll take the last kernel which has already been modified for Ubuntu and they will release this in addition giving you that full support on the previous kernel with a bridge to the newer kernel if you're using the newer unstable it will move up to the official as soon as it is ready and so 
And they have various guidelines that looking at the unstable release guidelines. Unstable release, the Linux kernel is expected to be in RC state, not in the final form, even though they should not be any features added, only fixes to committed features. These fixes could be substantial or even possible for futures to be removed. As an upstream kernel is still in the state of flux, there is no point doing a full regression battery on it or deriving it from. So the CKT will deliver a minimally supported unstable kernel. <clears throat> so no standard SRU on the unstable kernel. CKT will release updates as deemed beneficial at their decision, most likely per each RC release, but it will be an example, not a requirement. No variance in unstable kernels, uh, so no hardware enablements or, or other variations of the kernels. Dependent components on the unstable will be best effort and likely to be unavailable during, until stabilization, which means we have some potential system regression. An unstable kernel is considered unsupported, so reported issues or formal support requests will be addressed by the CKT, but will not be considered acceptable to defer any investigation until after the kernel stabilization and no live patches on an un unstable kernel note the live patches cannot be used to upgrade kernel versions all right so <laughs> that's weird and then we have bridge kernels by declaring a late release they're making a public announcement um uh, that it may not be fully qualified or in its final form. It can range from disabled to unavailable, uh, depending on the various components. Uh, the bridge kernel of the for a prior release upstream has been fully prepared and will be released, but has a short lifespan expectation as it exists solely to provide compatibility until re the release kernel of record stabilizes. So guidelines for the bridge kernels, of course. Um, so effectively, what they're saying here is that, yes, there's a very good chance that the Ubuntu 2510 will have an unstable kernel. And there's a lot of thoughts and opinions about this. So let's go ahead and parse some of these out. Number one point here is that Ubuntu is always trying to be compatible with the absolute latest hardware. This means that having the 617 even in a more unstable almost ready to go is advantageous if you're talking about the absolute latest processors remember this con concludes driver support for the absolute latest intel's available in the hardware market which means that if you are working on edge ubuntu it makes sense to have the 617 over the 616 even if it is in a release candidate status Okay, the second thing we have to keep in mind is that the Ubuntu point releases, so one of them, the the even number in April is always in LTS. This has a long-term support. Uh, Ubuntu should never, ever, ever consider doing this with an LTS. I'll say that up front. They should always go with the latest LTS kernel and stick with that. Generally, I think that's kind of what they do. Uh, I don't follow the Ubuntu development as much as I used to, so I can't remember that for sure. But they should always do that. These non-LTS releases are literally designed to identify bugs. They are not considered what you would consider a stable full production machine. If you are using Ubuntu in a production environment, you probably want to stick to an LTS. Everything else I would consider as more for testing, or at least it's going to give you arch level headaches on a regular basis. I mean, that's just the reality of it. So this is not for me an absolute deal breaker, but it does kind of make me question a few of their decisions one of the biggest decisions is hey let's consider moving that kernel freeze a couple days if it looks like there's only going to be the seven releases and it looks like that kernel may official release on the 28th dude push it out three days don't be dumb <laughs> okay Push them out three days. So you get the you get the final release kernel. You still should have some time. If you have to push the update out, the, the full release out three whopping days to make sure you have a stable kernel instead of a RC kernel, that is definitely worth it. So it really makes you question the veracity of these self-imposed timelines upon themselves. Now, some people in the comments over here, I pulled up the, the Fornix comments to this article, and some people are saying, well, this is the same thing Fedora is doing. However, no, Fedora doesn't ship with, uh, it doesn't ship with uh, RC kernels. Also, Ubuntu ships with ZFS, which is not necessarily stable in these latest kernels. Uh, and so there's been some discussion on that. So I looked that up a little bit. And yeah, uh, ZFS really isn't stabilized until the kernel is fully out. So 
Fedora does not ship ZFS. Ubuntu does. And that means if you are looking at 25.10 and you want to use ZFS, you might want to wait until a release when the official kernel is out. Uh, additionally, though, uh, some people are saying, well, Fedora is just trying to catch up with Ubuntu. No, actually, I think, A, I think Fedora does really its own thing. But B, I think Fedora is a, a stronger, more stable, and more sane development team, as much as it pains me to say that, because they're not so hard, fast to deadlines that they won't push their release out three days to get, I don't know, a stable kernel. Uh, it seems to make sense to do stuff like that. But they're like, nope, nope. That Our our kernel freeze date is solid. If that thing's three days out, we're going to release from the RC. <laughs> no, don't do that. You are going to cause regressions. And this is why, whereas Ubuntu used to be the king of those first-use Linux distributions, this is why Ubuntu is starting to lose its favor. They're doing weird and irrational things. They're shipping point releases of major distributions with release candidate kernels instead of pushing it out three whopping days to get the stable kernel. Now, I understand what they're doing here, and it does make sense on some level. However, it does raise some questions. Is it going to be more advantageous? Like, 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 what is the best solution? Is the best solution to go back to the 616? I don't think so. It is an edge release. It should have the latest kernel. But does it make sense to release with an RC? No. Stop doing that stupid stuff. It makes more sense to say we're talking about three days Move it out three days. Now, if it looks like there's a lot of bugs, it looks like we're going to have that October release date instead of the September release date, okay, fine, go with your current plan. But my advice to the Ubuntu team for the sanity of the distribution and the sanity of the release, keep a closer eye on that and make that decision. See if you can't push that out three days if it looks like that Linux kernel is going to drop on 28th of September. That does 28th of September. You look at it, you say, okay, all looks good. Let's freeze the kernel on the 29th of September. Do that, merge everything in. And if you have to push the date out three more days for the official release to do any back patching that would have been done in that three days, go ahead and do that. It makes a lot more sense to have a stable kernel release rather than an RC kernel release, especially if it means that you're going to have an expectation of some things aren't going to be working. You're not going to be able to live patch in from the RC up to the regular one as easily. There's going to be more issues by wait, by just, you know, more issues than if you push the things out three days. So it's okay. It's not like a horrible deal breaker. This isn't going to be an Ubuntu that should be used in a lot of production environments. But at the same time, it does make sense for them to question their self-imposed deadlines to say, yeah, maybe let's just push that out three days, four days, so that we can actually release with the official kernel. But that's really what they're doing. And uh, I'll be watching this to see what actually happens with this release in October. So uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts about this craziness in the comments down below.